Hey everyone, it's Richard from Big Nature, and in this video, I want to talk about Motor because they are about to release version 2 of it, which is going to change around the API by a lot and add some very interesting features such as automatic detection of the file extension, as well as providing you with a read stream so that you can actually handle the logic for uploading your files instead of the middleware simply uploading the file where all you could do before is determine the file name or something, but you couldn't actually handle the uploading of your file directly. This is the release candidate of version 2. They said that they want to release this on the 1st of March. Um, now it's the 4th of March, so didn't release it yet, so I'm guessing it will take a few days. The developer of this has said that it's safe to start using version 2 right now. So in order to show you these new features, let's make a real quick React app. I already have my um, code open here, so let's say npx create React app and create that in our current directory. So let's wait until this finishes installing. And while we do that, we can take a look at what has changed in the API. So before we start, maybe let me introduce you to Motor. So Motor is a middleware that you use if you want to handle multi-part form data. The reason you want to use multi-part form data is whenever you are sending a file and you also want to include some parameters along with it. Because if you just send your file into your request body, it's not possible to send any more parameters, uh, like any strings along with it. That is why we need this multi-part form data. And Molter is the middleware that will pass this data for us. It will give us access to the request body. This one cannot be passed by the body parser, which handles the application JSON format. And it also gives us access to the file, right? So if you'll see, originally in Molter, you would have to declare the storage object, which looks something like this. And this basically contains the options for uploading your file, such as the file name and the destination. But if we go to this new branch here now, which is called Explore New API, if you are watching this video and they already released this, then this is going to be the master branch, obviously. But so now, as you can see here, the API has changed. And now you don't declare your options anymore. You simply have an instance of Molter. You now have this stream in your API, which you can then use to write to your file system. So pretty cool stuff. Let's see how this works. Okay, so it has finished installing. Let's start it up. So here's our React app. I just want to make a simple form here that has one parameter and the file, right? Let's just go remove all this stuff. And I have prepared some CSS, which I will add in here. This is just some basic style to make our form look kind of cool. And I have a flex class, which uh, just which is just a flex box. So what we want here is a form, right? Form. And the action doesn't matter because we don't actually send it with HTML. Now I want to mention, if you're sending this form using traditional HTML, you have to remember that you have to specify this ENC type of multi-part form data in your form. Otherwise, it's going to use the application JSON format, and that will not be able to be passed correctly. But we are not using PHP to send this form, so we don't need to do that. Instead, I'm just going to make this flex div here, and what we need is a label. This label is going to be for name. It's going to say name, and we need an input of the type text this input is going to have the ID name. Now we need our file input, uh, make a label for the file. This is going to say file, and we make an input. This time the type is file, and the ID is also file. This should not be like this. And now here is this one. Now I just want to do this example using only images. So I'm going to say accept JPEG. And what this is going to do is when I click here, it's going to pre-select images. So now all we need is a button to send it, and this is going to be an on click that calls the send function, right? And the send function is going to take in the event. Now let's just log something, right? So now here's our basic form. Um, we have our name, we have our file, and we have a button to send it. So in order to send this, we're going to have to put this in our state, right? So let's just get our state going here. The name, that name, auto import are you state. Oh, I put some stupid character in there. So we also need file, set file. To put this into our state, we have to make some on change functions. Let's say on change, and that's going to be a function that takes the event. It's always good to initialize your event target values to an actual constant. I'm going to destructure the value event target and then i'm going to say set name to the value now our file is going to be similar we have the on change function which takes the event again we're going to initialize our file to a constant 
but this time it's going to be event target this one is going to have files and files is going to be a file list and at position zero will be our file that we want and then we can say set file to our file testing this you can go to our components type something here as you can see it's taken in our state and select some file as you can see this is also taken in our state now this is a file in javascript it doesn't really look like a file but it is a file the file belongs to the blob type i believe so this is a blob remember we want to be sending multi-part form data how do we do that in javascript well in javascript it looks like this new form data and the way we put data into our form data is using the append method and the append method takes in a name which is basically the object key which is going to be name of course and then it takes in the value which can be a string or blob so basically it can be a file or just a string we want to attach our name as a string here so i'm going to append the name and then i'm also going to append the file and that's going to be the file i think it's best practice to attach the file last i think there can be some problems if you don't attach the file last so the in, the, the weird thing about form data is if you go ahead and console log it now so let's choose something here choose some file and if we console log this you will see this form data here and it looks empty however that is because your browser is not able to understand this form data that's why it looks empty in your console it's not actually empty. So in order to make sure that uh, this is working, we can use HTTP bin to verify that it's working. So I want to use Axios to make my request. So let's install Axios. And now I can auto import Axios, I think. Yes. So we're gonna post this. And the first parameter of post is gonna be the address. For testing, we're gonna send this to .org slash anything. What we want to send along with it is our data and then of course we want to resolve the response console log it and let's also go ahead and catch any errors console log those that should be good now if we send some file and some name this is going to be sent to http bin which responds to us uh, by simply parsing the data that we send and sending it back and as you can see here in our data now we have files which is an image looks good and we also have this form which contains our parse form data remember in our browser when we try to log it it doesn't even log it as you can see they correctly parsed it if it looks like this you're doing the right thing you can also see in the headers the content type now is multi-part form data if you send anything else the type will be application json and now we can go ahead and go make our express backend and actually see the new functions of multi version 2. so let's go into our backend and i'm gonna use express generator in here also open code so now we have to npm install and uh, I want to use node daemon. So when we install node daemon, let's change this to the node mon. In the express boilerplate, they don't log anything when starting the server. So I like to put something like listening on port, put the port. So let's type the npm start. So now it's uh, starting our server. Maybe we should also install cores just to make sure there are no, no problems and say app use cores and also import course. So now everything is ready and we can make our route. So let's make a new route and it's gonna listen to a post and it's gonna listen to the upload path. For now, let's just log something to the console. So let's tell Axios to post this to our own server now, which should run on localhost 3000 and send this to upload. So now if we make this request, it should log something to our console as you can see, it logs hey. So now we can get started using uh, Multer. So npm install Multer. Since at the time of this video, the version two is not released yet, I have to specify the version of this release candidate. Multer add version. Uh, if they already released version two, then you just have to type install Multer, of course. So let's go ahead and require Multer. And now all we need is to make a new instance of Multer. It's called upload. And now instead of declaring the whole options object and so on, we simply call the single method, which says that we are uploading a single file. There are also array methods and field methods. If you want to upload multiple files, check the doc. And this one takes in the field name, which is exactly what you put in here. We have to put file here, right? So this should be enough for Multer to do everything now, right? If it works, we will have access to the request body. And as you can see here, it correctly parses our body and dis displays the parameters that we sent. But where is our file? For this, we have to log the request file. So if we send this request now, you will see 
this file here, right? Immediately you can see that this path here, it actually uploaded our file to a temporary directory. And now we have this stream here, which is a read stream. If you know something about Node, then you know that we can pipe this read stream into a write stream and write the file to our file system now. And that's super cool because now we can handle all the logic of uploading the file in the route itself, and then we can upload the file. Also, you can see it automatically detects the file extension for you now, which is amazing because as you might know, you cannot trust the user to give you the correct file extension. Anyone can go ahead, make some text document, call it picture.jpg, and now this is not a picture, but it looks like a picture. If I send this fake picture now called this virus, you can see when it logs it here, the client reported file extension will be JPEG, but it detects the file extension itself. And you can see here, the detected MIME type is null. So there is something wrong with this file. It's certainly not what the user is telling us. First of all, let's initialize our values. So we need the file and we can go into the body and get our name from the request. So you can, you can go ahead and say if file.detected file extension is not JPEG, then you can send an error in valid file type. So now if I send this false Im image, oh, and I now open the console, you will see that the request sends a failed with status 500 back to me. That's awesome. What you can also do is you can handle the logic for making your file name in a much more comfortable way. So you can say file name, and now whatever you want, you can use the param parameters that are sent to you to uh, construct your file name. So let's just say, name let's just put some random number and this file also needs your file extension conveniently they're already detected for us you see that it also includes the period so we just have to concatenate it in here and that should be it and now comes the part where we have to pipe the stream that we have now in this file into our file system what we need is the file system fs then we need our pipeline. I want to use the await keyword on my pipeline, so I'm gonna promissify it. And promissify, we're going to require stream dot pipeline. And so all this does is this will now return a promise, and we can await it. And you can see pipeline takes in two streams to pipe them together. The first stream is gonna be the file stream, which is a read stream, and we're gonna pipe that into a file system create write stream. And now all this takes is a path. And for that, let's use a uh, backticks. Let's use the dir name, which puts us in our current directory. So we have to go out of the routes folder into the public folder. Then in our public folder, there will be an images folder. And in there, we're going to save our file. So put in the file name. And yeah, there we go. This should write the file to our file system. Now, of course, to use the await keyword, we have to make this an async function. Also, of course, we have to send some kind of response. So let's say file uploaded as, and then we can put the file name here. Uh, and this is not utils, it's util. Oh, I, why did I put this here? I don't know why. Of course, it has to be in this order. So yeah, running this again, uh, I get a success response and it says file uploaded as Richard, not a number dot JPEG. So this is also here. I mean, the image is working. We just made some uh, error. Yeah, this should be a method. So yeah, if we do this again, how it works, as you can see, file uploaded as Richard836.jpg. And I think that's awesome. These are really awesome features. It makes it much easier to work with Motor. You also get some features that you usually have to handle yourself, uh, like detecting the file stream, I mean, the file extension. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to follow along with the code, you can go into our blog post below. I have all the code in there. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know and I'll see you next time.